Hey everyone, before we look at the market here together, I want to make sure that everyone's staying safe. Hope you're staying healthy. I just had a, a lengthy phone call with uh, someone who has a lot of insight into pandemics and things of that nature. Um, and definitely we're facing various situations, different schools of thoughts of, of how we, 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 uh, we get through this. Um, but please make sure you stay safe. Um, and healthy. Now, I want to go through a couple of charts here. I, I, the main idea of what I want to portray here today is that in in when you have such high volatility, which usually is a result of a drawdown in the markets, uh, particularly when you get into a bear market, which we're now getting into, and I think there's a good chance if ultimately we see a recession, you are going to have very, very, very sharp rallies from a bear market perspective. So there's an old saying out there that says that no one makes money in bear markets, not even the bears make money. And, and, and the reason for that is because when you have rallies in bear markets, they can be super, super, super steep. So let me just go to the chart and just quickly give you guys a little bit of perspective. And we're gonna cover a lot more of this in the coming weeks. We're probably gonna go into a, a, over to a move over to a daily life show. So stay tuned on that here real soon. But looking at the chart, just for some perspective, we're gonna handicap this using the S&P 500 because I think a lot of people can kind of uh, put their head around this. But this is the long-term trend and so far on a weekly closing basis, all we've done is get to the lower end of the trend. However, what's probably different now at, at this late in the cycle is that you know we are very late in the cycle and you know credit uh, the credit markets are, are singing a different tune that they had for a long time there is definitely room i'm not saying this can happen tomorrow i don't think it's going to happen very very soon although it certainly can with this volatility but if you get a 50 percent retracement of the lows of 2009 all the way up to the highs of december 2000 uh, or excuse me february 2020s or a few weeks ago we're looking at the S&P being able to get down towards, you know, just about 2000, maybe a little bit above there, maybe a bit below there, right? So that's, that is entirely uh, a possibility. I'm not saying it's going to happen. It's not inevitable, but it's possible. So just kind of for perspective. Um, so that's number one. But what, what I want to go through is, is, is kind of give you some ideas of if you get a sharp bear market rally, uh, which that I think is very likely to happen very soon, probably. Um, first of all, it could be very sharp. So obviously, you know, we don't know exactly where this stops, but let's say you go from the lows we have here recently. I mean, I don't see any reason why the market can't rally 20%. It's possible, right? And if you look at past historic uh, bear markets, the S&P have plenty of 10 to 15, even some 20% rallies. So I think... I want to caution people to when you're at the bottom end of the range or toward the lower end of trading ranges, it's very, very dangerous to be short. Just like it can be very dangerous to be long at the upper end of the trading ranges, which we once again found out in you know the past few weeks. So to give you some more specifics, and, and I don't really necessarily want to go into these very small details, but just to give you an idea, one of the things that you can look for, we're looking at, at the SPX. I'm going to move over to the SPY ETF just because a lot of people use that as a, the trading vehicle. If you look at the SPY ETF as a reference point, you will see plenty of gaps. And I'm going to draw them in for you a little bit. These are basically points in the market where the where the, the index, or you can this works on stocks, as individual stocks as well, where they basically what, uh, did what's called a down gap. And I'm trying to find that here. Um, and so that then becomes an attraction point. So for example, here we have an unfilled gap. Then we have an unfilled gap up here, right? So these are the, 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 the gaps on a daily closing basis. We have an unfilled gap here for the most part. We have another one higher. So these are lots of gaps that we could see um, the market start to fill very quickly. Let me give you another one up here. Uh, again, I don't want to necessarily highlight any one of these as, as more significant than any other, but there is, a, at least right now, as if this recording here on, on Monday, March the 16th, there are certainly four of these gaps that would not at all be difficult for the market to, 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 to get once we see that rally happen. So uh, again, if you take the lows here recently, and again, we could certainly go lower before we, we bounce, but you know that last gap is about 20% higher. So at least three, maybe four of these could get filled. So use those as profit targets. So if you're gonna be long something, which again, at the lower end of the range, the, 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 
the pot, the probability of a of buying something are better than shorting it at a lower end of the range. So here, you know, a first profit target would be uh, maybe 274 on the S and P SPY. Then maybe it's 284. Uh, then it's about 294. That's funny that it comes in 10 points increments. I didn't even realize that. Uh, and then about 3,004. That's quite ironic almost. But anyway, I, I just want to show you this. At the same time, what you can do, you can look at the VIX, which, Im which uh, measures implied volatility, and then there are up gaps here. So you could say, okay, let's look at some of the unfilled gaps here. There's some, there's some here, some here, there's some here. So some of these gaps could be closed, and you want to kind of analyze that. You know, I mean, this will line up more or less with the S&P you know, gap analysis we just made. So um, uh, anyway, just wanted to bring this to your attention. But I think the, the other point that I want to just make one more time, and I'll go back to this original chart that we had a minute ago uh, on the S&P 500. Again, I'm not trying to scare people, but uh, you know, a lot of people, I'm hearing a lot of people say, oh, this is a generational buying opportunity. Well, just so you guys know, all we're doing is getting back to more or less where we were in, uh, in basically December 2018. So... <laughs> We haven't really done all that much, and there's basically we've treaded a lot of water since then. Although there's been, of course, big rallies, right? So uh, we do think in the bigger picture we could certainly correct more. Um, but in the meantime, I want to just make sure that you understand there are big, big, sharp rallies that tend to happen in um, in, uh, in in bear markets. So just uh, be aware of that. Hope is helpful, folks, and we'll see you guys soon.